Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kamaya, and if you're interested in seeing how I did these double dutch knotless box braids, then keep on watching. <laughs> proceeds I'd just like to give credits to the content creator Golden Serenity that's her name on YouTube she's the one who created this hairstyle she's the first person that I've ever seen do a tutorial or even pop up with this hairstyle I just like to give credits to her definitely go check her channel out she has a lot of other cute styles that not a lot of people are wearing if you're one of the girls starting this style off with my hair pre-separated I used the Silk Edges by Shine and Jam Edge Control along with the Edge Booster Edge Control by slithering a lot of the silk edges around the section that I pre-separated. And I use a lot of this one because it's cheaper. After slithering the Shine and Jam around the entire perimeter of the section, I comb it through with a fine tooth comb. Next, I apply a small amount of Edge Booster above this just for a little bit of extra hold. And I use a small amount of this because it is a little bit more expensive. I'm using these clear rubber bands for my section, but I would highly recommend you not use these clear rubber bands. <laughs> like right after finishing this style, most of these rubber bands popped and I had to use the regular black rubber bands. These rubber bands are good in the sense that you don't see them, however, they're not durable and they're not strong enough for you to manipulate and move your hair around without them popping. Next, I split these two sections into two and I twist each of these sections just to get them out of the way. Also, Frosty wanted to say hi, so this is Frosty saying hi. It's a quarter after one. I'm all alone and I need you now. I just wanted to add in that these two sections that I split my hair into, they're not identical, but they are around the same size. It doesn't have to be equal, but you have to try to at least make them close in size. So don't be too fixated on making them equal because you could always feed in or take out hair when you're putting in the um, braid in here to make your braids match in size. I used a total of three packs of the Shake and Go Free Tress 301 braid in here in the color number four. This is one of my favorite braid in here. These are some of the hair care instructions that are found on the back. The hair is pre-stretched and is about 28 inches, I believe. And I just go ahead and pre-separate the sections that I will be feeding into my box braid. For the braids, I just go ahead and put away the section that I'm not working with and start off with my first section. I split my natural hair into three sections and I do a plait for about a count of three. When I get to three, I start to feed in the braid in here. To feed in the hair, I know I usually advise in my videos for you to feed it in beneath the section closest to your face, but I think I wanna rephrase that and say whichever section of your natural hair is on top, that's where you want to slip the braid in here underneath. You want to rest it on the middle section and bring it up underneath whatever section of your natural hair is on top. And you will repeat these steps to feed in here for the entire duration of your braid. The amount of hair that you feed in and the time space between when you feed in each strand of hair will determine how thick and long each braid is. For example, I fed in hair relatively in close time spans right behind each other, and that was to build up the thickness of my braids. 
If you want to make your braids thinner and longer, you could space out the amount of time you're feeding in to be a little longer. When you're feeding in hair, try not to do what I just did and feed in a really thick piece of braid in here into a really skinny braid or it will be bumpy. You want to feed in smaller sizes and within those smaller sizes, like I said, if you want the braid to be thicker, you put a smaller piece of hair right after you braid that one. So basically, my thing was this. I feed in, plait twice, feed in again. Plait twice, feed in again. Plait twice, feed in again. Until I had the length that I want and the thickness that I wanted. So when you're done with your first section, you're just going to move along to the second section and repeat the same process. Well, not exactly the same process, but you're going to follow steps that you think would best create another braid that matches the size of the braid you first created. So that means you will determine how much hair you want to feed in, like the thickness of each piece you feed in. And you also want to determine how frequently you're going to be feeding in each of these sections to your braid. The closer the time intervals between strands that you're feeding in, the thicker the braid could be. The longer the time interval is, the skinnier the braid will be and the longer the braid will be. So just keep that in mind while you're feeding in. The target audience for this video is beginner braiders. But if you're an expert braider, I just wanted to remind you, just be patient with yourself and try your best. I know sometimes as braiders, you want to make everything perfect the first try, but just be patient and try your best. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you try your best and it looks the best that you could possibly make it. Good luck with this style if you decide to try it. And I would love to hear feedback of what you think of it and also how it went if you actually did try it out. I'll see you guys in the outro. So this is the end result. The braids are cute. Um, so I did these blunt cut ends. They're really pretty and cute. And as you saw, each section has two box braids, two knotless box braids in each. I just wanted to add that the clear rubber bands were not a go. The quality is not as good as the black rubber bands. And I had to go in and replace each clear rubber band three times. So the first time I thought maybe it was me and I was manipulating my hair too much. It wasn't. I put another clear rubber band and the same thing happened. So with the clear rubber band, it will work out if you keep your hair in one position and never touch it, which is not possible. But I just went back in and I did black rubber bands instead. And it's not really showing as much as I thought it would. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it to be helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to see more hair tutorials like this or fashion and lifestyle content, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss another upload. And leave a comment down below. Would you try this hairstyle or is it a no for you? I like the hairstyle. However, it's not something that I would do again. And if I do it again, it won't be as big as it is right now because I cannot put it up in a high ponytail, a comfortable high ponytail right now. These braids are too thick and too big. And also, I feel like I look like a little girl. High school, college me would make this look a little cuter, but it's not bad. It's still flat. 
it's still it's really full so if you like the full look but you want them big i think this would be a perfect style for you anyways thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye